In the last video, I suggested that the way that we've been doing things is probably not the best idea. And let me just quickly illustrate what we are doing. Right now, for each test, we are making a request to an external API. Now, this API could be just whatever API that we found on the website, or it could be our own API. It doesn't matter. We're making a request to it, and then we're getting back some data. Now, I'm going to suggest that this is not a good approach. Some people say that this is actually great because now we can test our React application as well as the API. But I don't think this is a very good approach for a few reasons. The first reason is that requests cost money. And to be honest, in a real production application, you're going to be running your tests over and over and over again. And if you have a huge application that's making a lot of requests, that could cost you a lot of additional money. And that is not a great idea. Now over here, we're using an external API, so it's not gonna cost us any money, but it might cost them money. And you know, they're probably not going to be happy with that. So that is the first thing, requests cost us money. The second thing is that requests are slow. For each test, we have to go ahead and make a request and then wait for the data to come back. And I've worked on applications that have thousands of tests. And if we had to do that, I might have to wait a day or two for all of the tests to run successfully. So requests are really slow, and this can be very problematic when our tests are continuously making requests. Now the last thing, and I think this is the most important reason why I don't like this approach, is that our tests are now dependent on something external. So right here, we really just want to test out our front end React application. We do not want to test out anything else. But if we make these HTTP requests and we rely on data coming back, then we are testing out the API as well. And if for some reason the API fails, then our tests will fail. And that's gonna cause our tests to be very flaky and they won't really increase the confidence of our application. So what I suggest doing is instead, well, just focus solely on the React and test just the React. And if you have an API, then just test the API in complete isolation. So you're going to test the React app in complete isolation, and then you're going to test the, uh, the API in complete isolation. And any interaction within that, you can just mock that interaction. So for instance, instead of actually making the request and getting back the data, what we can do is we can completely omit the API and we can just make a mock request. So we can make a mock request and just get back some dummy data that would be sent back typically if the API sent us. So the data would have the same structure. So we can just mock it. And that is the approach that I recommend taking. Just mock the data that you get back so we don't have all of these other issues that we have talked about. So to implement a mock inside of our React application, we have to figure out what we want to mock. Now, if we go to the follower list component, what we want to mock is the axios.get call. We don't want to actually make that HTTP request and get back data. Instead, we just want to mock it and get back some dummy data that conforms to the data that we get back from this API. So if we actually just do a quick console.log to the data, and let's go to our, let's close that. Let's go over here. And you can see that this is the data that we get back. Let's do a quick refresh. You can see here that we get an array that has or an object that has results and then in the results we have an array of the people and inside is an object and here we have the login information that contains the username and that's what we're using over here we're also using the name so the first and last so first and last and then we're also using the picture dot large to get their image. So we're going to mock this. We're not gonna mock every single piece of information because we're not using it, but we will be using the login.username, we'll be mocking the name.first and last, and then the picture.large. So let's go ahead and mock this. And remember, we want to mock the Axios call. Now with Jest, 
we can mock things very easily. So all we have to do to mock things is inside of the source directory, create a underscore underscore mocks underscore underscore and note that the name of this is extremely important. So let's just go ahead and create this. And then in here, we're going to create a file of what we want to mock. Now the file name has to be exactly the thing that we want to mock. Now we want to mock Axios. Now notice right now we have 12 tests passing. So we want to mock Axios. We're going to say axios.js. So once we do axios.js, we are going to be mocking axios.js. And you can see that our tests now have failed because, well, we're mocking axios.js, but we're not returning back any data. So let's just go ahead and let's just mock uh, axios and return back some data. Now we want to export default an object and then what we want to do is have the get key because we're not going to be making just Axios call. We're going to be making an Axios.get call. And then in here, what we can do is just mock some data. So we can just say that, hey, this is going to be a mock function, a just function. And then we're going to do mock resolved value. And then we're going to pass in the mock value in here. So I can just create another variable and do something like const mock response. Then we can say something like data and then results. And then over here, we can have an object and I'm going to put the name. And then here I'm going to have first Remember, this is the same structure that we get back from our API if we didn't mock it. So we have uh, first, I'm going to actually give it a real name, lathe, and then last, and that's going to be harb. And then over here, we're going to do the picture. So the picture and the picture, we're going to say large. And let's just get a random picture from this API. So let's go here. And let's just copy this link and paste it in there. Okay, so we got the picture and then the login. So we want the username from the login object. So we're gonna say the goat, the phony goat really. I'm not really the goat, I'm the phony goat. There we go. Okay, the phony goat. Okay, cool. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and pass that in. But now notice something. So this is still going to fail and it's not going to mock our data. Now the the um, the first, the second test, well, this makes sense because now we're only returning one. So we can actually just comment this out and because this will always fail, even if we mock it correctly. But this one, well, we expected this one to pass. Now the reason why this is not passing is because React by default is resetting our mock every single time. And I've, I've done extensive research as to how to find this and I found that, or how to fix this. And I found that the only way of doing it thus far is just working, doing something with the node modules. Now typically I don't recommend touching the node modules at all, but for this case, I just say, go to the node modules and then find the React scripts. And what we want to do is we want to say, hey, we don't want you to reset the mock every time. We want to set that from true to false. So we're gonna go here into the React scripts, into the scripts directory, into utilities, and then into create jest config. And then in line 69, we want to reset mocks to be false. And now what we can do is just restart this, and then we can say npm run test, and then our tests actually pass. Now, again, this is not the cleanest way of doing things, and I really haven't found another way of successfully mocking our application. If you have another way, please link it to me in, in the comment section or give me a message uh, so you guys can uh, maybe help one another out. But I really don't, I couldn't find another way of doing things. So just change this to false. And now you can see that our tests pass. And to double check what you can do, is screen.debug. And what this does is it console.logs the element. So we can do a screen.debug. 
and just to see that that data that we got back is is mocked you see here we have lathe harb the phony goat and this right here is a far far better approach than actually making that http request all right so that is mocking data in the next video we're going to be talking about some of the different hooks that we get in jest